Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about an article it's called A Reusable PMMA Paper, Paper Hybrid Plug and Play Microfluidic Device for a Multisensitive Immunostay with a Wide Lighting Range. One of the main problems that it's current face uh, in terms of detection of infectious diseases is the lack of most effective medical interventions. It sums up with the fact that most of them are laborious and time consuming, and in the specific case of cholerometric medicine, with the fact that low detections that they have, it has a low detection sensitivity for low volume and low concentration. So in the specific case of this paper, it's mentioned that point of care detection platforms are needed, and they developed a PMMA paper hybrid plug and play microfluidic device. We are going to focus in the design of this device and in the working principle of, them, of it. So as the title states, it's a hybrid device. It's going to be composed by two different matrices. matrices. One, the PMMA chip or the PMMA frame and the paper substrate. We're going to see how both of them are designed and how both of them work and join so we can perform an uh, easy and quick uh, and also very sensitive or ultra sensitive uh, is a colorimetric assay. So here, sorry. Here we can see the, the chip design. Uh, this specific part of the chip are, is composed or is uh, made purely of PMA, PMMA, that is polymethyl metacrylate. The bottom layer, it, ha it has three layers, uh, a top, middle, and bottom layer. The bottom layer has only two slots that reach the middle of the bottom layer, the middle space of the bottom layer. It is mainly used to give support for the paper substrate that is going to be added later. And it's where all the reaction is going to, to be performed. So we have the bottom layer that only has four slots so that we can run um, a duplicate, but uh, we can run two samples in duplicate or uh, more confidence in, in our results. In the middle layer, we have the continuation of the slots, of the four slots, and we have the channels, the micro channels where uh, our analytes and samples are going to flow through and reservoirs for these analytes and samples. In the top layer, that is also made from uh, PMMA. We have the, con the continuation of um, the four slots, the inlet, and the outlet of the reservoirs. It's important that we have inlets and outlets in the reservoirs because the flow, uh, the working principle of this chip is that the, the analytes and the samples are going to flow back and forth from inlet to reservoir and from reservoir to inlet. So we are going to use two syringe pumps, one syringe pump for the inlet and one that is going to take out from the reservoir and it's going to put again the, the analytes and samples so it can go back and forth, back and forth uh, through our, our paper substrate that is going to be C and going to be the three of the day. Here is how it, it's going to look uh, in, a, in a 3D perspective. And this is how the actual uh, microchip is, is seen. It's an actual power photograph of the assembled plug and play hybrid microfluidic device. We can see here the inlets and the reservoirs. Here are the slots where the paper substrate is going to be located once we are going to carry an immuno uh, an ELISA assay. Here is the working principle of this hybrid plug and play microfluidic device. 
Here we have the first layer, the top layer, where the inlets are located. We have the, the inlets and the outlets of the reservoir are located. Here we have the middle layer where the channels, the micro channels are located and the reservoirs are also located. And the third or bottom layer that offers support for the location of, um, of the paper substrate. That is where this colorimetric assay is going to happen. So here we can see that we um, we put the the analytes, the reagents, and the samples for the antigens or antibody detection. This uh, liquid flows through the channels, uh, immobilized here in the paper matrix in the paper substrate and are uh, located in the reservoir. It's going to flow from here to the reservoir and from the reservoir again to the inlet. It's uh, what allows the paper substrate to be fully, or for the proteins and analytes to be fully immobilized in its paper substrate. It is very important that the, the liquids going uh, back and forth flow. So here is uh, the paper matrix. We can see that it's um, a chromatography paper that, it's, uh, was that was treated with SU8. It is observed in the, in the uh, supplementary material that these uh, authors offered that this paper-based device was was made using photoresist SUA that was added to a chromatography paper and using the spread on both sides. After uh, the use of photoresist of these photoresist of SUA, we come out with uh, a paper substrate that looks like this. It only has four uh, circular regions that it, they are going to be fully. Uh, Fully used for the performance of the LIS assay. We, or in this paper, they used both, uh, only, they compared only the paper device and the paper device together with the, the PMMA frame. So we are going to see this, how the, this performed in the results. Before that, they optimized the flow rate of the analyte. We can see here the results that they come up with. Uh, we can see that the optimal flow rate is 20 microliters per minute. We can also see that they optimized the enrichment time and the enrichment cycles. The enrichment time, the optimal enrichment time was uh, three minutes. So we are going to, <laughs> to have back and forth cycles of the analytes and samples for during two minutes. And it's going to happen in three enrichment cycles. An enrichment cycle, it's considered to be once the fuel sample, it's uh, uh, the, the volume considered from the sample intake is 50 microliters. So we can, we can have 25 microliters in one slot and 25 in the other slot for a, a unique sample. So an enrichment, a fuel enrichment cycle is considered when the when the liquid was fully placed in the in the channels uh, within the, the chip, and it comes out again uh, from the chip. It's considered they, this is going to happen three times during three minutes. Here we can see the sensitivity of the hybrid plug and play microfluidic device in terms of the detection of immunoglobulin G, which is the most abundant um, antibody in the human body. Here we can see that there is a linear correlation between the concentration of immunoglobulin G in the sample and the correct the brightness of the circular region we are considering. Here we can see and we can obtain with this 
and a curve and a standard curve so we can then uh, make quantitative analysis of our samples. We can establish uh, the quantity of antigen that it's in a specific sample or the quantity of uh, mm -hmm. antigens that uh, a person has. Here is the same assay, but uh, using hepatitis B surface antigens. Here is the, uh, the assay performed using the hybrid plug and play microfluidic device. And here's the comparison with uh, paper device. Here we can see that in the hybrid plug and play microfluidic device, uh, a linear correlation between the concentration of this uh, antigen and the corrected brightness is observed. In contrast, uh, it, sorry, in the hybrid plug and play microfluidic device, a linear correlation is observed for the whole span of concentrations used. It's from 34 uh, by 10 to the one uh, picograms per milliliter to 34 by 10 to the seventh uh, picograms per milliliter. In contrast, when the assay was carried out uh, on a paper-based device, there is um, a linear relation, or there is an increase in the concentration uh, or on, on the brightness. There is an increase in the brightness only from the concentrations uh, 34 by to the second micrograms per milliliter here until 10, 34 by 10 to the sixth micrograms per milliliter. So there is only, we, we are losing two concentrations when we only use uh, a paper-based device. When we work with uh, a paper-based device together with the PMMA matrix, to do with the PMMA chip, uh, it allows us to have more sensitivity that is observed here in this, in this specific concentration uh, that we are not having here. And also we have differences we can uh, detect higher we can detect the differences in higher concentrations that are not detected in the paper device. This happens because uh, what I talked about before, the back and forth, the, just the back and forth flow through the, the paper substrate using the chip. It allows us to have better uh, immobilization of antigens or antibodies used for the OBS assays. This is not happening here when using only a paper-based device because the sample or the reagents are um, are placed just once and after that there is no more steps. We, we are not having an optimal uh, flow or optimal uh, enrichment cycles for the paper substrate. As conclusions, they stated and they also uh, show us how they fabricated the PMMA chip. The PMMA chip was fabricated, as it was mentioned before, uh, using three layers, uh, bottom, middle, and top layers. These layers, the, or this chip, was fabricated using laser ablation technique, but it's uh, a rapid alternative to photo light power. This uh, strategy of laser ablation consists in the removal of material from the desired substrate using a laser. Also, a reversible seeding of the PMP plug and play device was obtained by examining these three layers together with in a glass slab uh, in the bottom layer, be below the bottom layer. So we can have a, a more uh, and a stronger device. For the reuse of the PMMA device uh, to perform multiple immunotides, we can wash. Uh, the channels with 70% ethanol, followed by uh, excess water and PBS buffer with 1% bovine serum atom. This will allow us to remove and to wash uh, any remnants of antigens or antibodies that we are using for, uh, for the assay, and also to wash uh, maybe the, the antigens or antibodies that 
could be potentially de 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 detected in a human sample or an animal sample. So this is uh, the most important thing is that it is a simple, this, this device is a simple, eco-friendly and portable hybrid plug and play microfluidic device for ultra sensitive immunosay. Uh, so it can be used uh, once again and once again, once again to perform ACR, uh, uh, as Isa says, because uh, the results could be viewed within 70 minutes and it offers us the possibility to uh, perform further quantitative analysis only using desktop scanner and image software, uh, not depending on uh, on expensive uh, expensive equipment as uh, spectrophotography. 